Candyman, 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 Candyman. I'm not going to say it, but it is out this weekend, a spiritual sequel to the 1992 original directed by Nia Costa. I'm going to let you know if this is one you should walk down those stairs, open the door, and go to see this weekend right after this. Hey, Outlaw Nation, it's the Outlaw John Roca here with a review for you for this brand new film, Candyman, the horror spiritual sequel to the 1992 original. This one directed by Nia DaCosta. We're going to get into it in just a second. I just want to remind you all to please subscribe to the channel down below. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell button so you see when we're dropping all the new content we do here on the Outlaw Nation channel. And when you're done with that, head on over to Twitch. Follow me on Twitch, the Outlaw Nation. Follow or subscribe to me on Twitch. And then after that, if you really want to support what we're doing here, head on over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash John Roca. See all the tiers that you can join at and all the benefits that come with whatever tier you sign up for at the Patreon. All right, let's get into this review for Candyman. <laughs> New to the neighborhood. <laughs> As I said, this comes to us from director Nia DaCosta, also written by Nia DaCosta, Wynn Rosenfeld, and Jordan Peele, who's executive producing on this one as well, based on the Bernard Rose film and Clive Barker's short story. A lot of people don't know this is based on a Clive Barker short story, the original, and the spiritual sequel is connected in that way as well. It stars Yahya Abdul-Mateen as Anthony McCoy, Tayona Paris as his girlfriend, Brianna Cartwright. You've also got Nathan Stewart, Jared as Troy Cartwright, who is uh, Brianna's brother, and Coleman Domingo as William Burke. All right, the film takes place in present day Chicago. It is shot entirely in Chicago. That's what Nia DaCosta has said in numerous interviews. And this is a decade after the last of the Cabrini Towers. Of course, Cabrini Green is where the film was set in 1992, was an actual uh, projects uh, and uh, that is no longer uh, around in this day in real life. Uh, but the, it's a decade after the Cabrini Towers were taken down. Anthony and his partner, Brianna, move into a loft in the now gentrified Cabrini area and a chance encounter with an old school guy exposes Anthony to the true story behind Candyman anxious to use these macabre details because he's in a bit of an artistic rut uh, in his studio he uses them as a fresh grist for paintings but he unknowingly opens a door to a complex past that unravels his own sanity and unleashes a terrifying wave of violence let's get into the things I liked about the movie well number one is the acting. I really liked Yahya Abdul-Mateen the second in this movie. You know, we've seen him in so many other projects from Aquaman to Watchman to other things, but there's something about what he does here. It's more of a restrained performance. He's an observer. He's an explorer. He doesn't know why he's being drawn to this, but he knows that something, something primal, something instinctive is drawing him to these stories about Candyman. He doesn't really think this thing through and starts to go down this path. And you know, if you know a lot of artists, you know, sometimes they're just drawn by certain things and they have to explore it and expose themselves to it to get through it and come out the other side. The curiosity gets the better of them and they need to know. And that's what Anthony does here uh, as he moves through all of this um, in his life to get his creative juices flowing so he can produce some artwork here. I think Tiana Paris does a good job here as Brianna as well. I think she's not served by the script. I, I don't know what changes they made because this is only 90 minute movie, but some of uh, Brianna's character work is presented, but not really explored. And I think that's a bit of a detriment for Brianna. But overall, I think Tiana Paris does a good job for what she's given, for what she's got to do here, playing off Anthony, also establishing herself singularly as a character who's kind of being thrust up to go be a part of this richer world and what she's being asked to do in exchange for that. Also, I do want to get in and give some love to Coleman Domingo. I think Coleman Domingo is stellar in this movie. He's the perfect amount of dread and information that uh, lures Anthony into this tale, lures Anthony into learning more. And also, uh, Coleman Domingo is tasked with kind of telling us these past stories of how white people have abused black bodies throughout history and all the different examples of it that occur and are spoken about throughout the movie. I think that, I think you have to have the right person to give that kind of exposition, to give that kind of history and background to this story that really kind of lays the foundation for you to go along with Anthony and understand why Anthony feels the need to explore this 
beyond just being an artist, also for his own race. I would imagine he wants to find out more about this as explore this about about himself. Uh, also want to give some love to Nathan Stewart Jarrett. I think he does a really good job as Brianna's uh, a brother. He's also in a gay relationship, which the story does not shy away from and puts right there front and center, which I appreciate and doesn't make a big deal out of it. It just is. It just is. So hopefully there'll be more relationships like that in all of these movies so that we just kind of like accept that this is the truth. It's not a big deal. And we move on as a society. He has some really funny moments throughout the movie. And in fact, He's the one that starts the process for Anthony because he tells the story about Candyman here uh, at the near the beginning of the movie that gets Anthony's mind going about what happens. And yeah, they don't walk away from the 1992 original. Helen Lyle is very much a part of this movie by, if nothing else, by name. And so you think about Virginia Madsen, you think about the original, you think about Tony Todd, you think about Xander Berkeley, Bernard Rose's direction in that original. So it's all there for you to see. So in that way, as I've said before, as they described it, it is a spiritual sequel because it does kind of pick up where it left left off. And we do hear the stories of what happened to Helen Lyle. Um, another thing I like about this movie is the inventiveness of the way they tell the story using these kind of stick figures or puppet figures from the beginning. That's a process that's it's, that's used throughout the movie to either explain the past or explain things that happened from the 1992 original or to explore more of what might happen uh, if you keep going down this path. I, I like that a lot. I think the cinematography here is absolutely excellent. Really brings you into the world of Chicago so well. John Glissarian did the cinematography. It deserves a lot of love for what he did here. Uh, the movements, the colors, the way he's framing the shots. Uh, and I'm sure Nita Costa uh, contributed to a lot of how these shots were framed. And I really appreciated that. I was never bored. I was never like looking at my phone. I was totally in to what was happening throughout the process of this movie and the story that they were telling. Also want to give some love to the music here. Robert Aki Aubrey Lowe does the music. Um, and he is stellar in bringing out uh, the mood of the movie throughout. It's not easy to follow Philip Glass in that original. Philip Glass is one of the most well-known composers ever. So I think, uh, but I think Robert Aki Aubrey Lowe uh, stands his ground. Uh, with what he does and can uh, go toe to toe with Philip Glass's score. Another thing I like about this movie, it is not scared to talk about gentrification. It is not scared to show you an arrogant white critic who thinks they can tell a black man about his work. Where have we seen that a million times before? Uh, and it's it has the guts to go and tell people what's really going on. It doesn't hide. It doesn't make it subtle or crafty. It is right there in your face for you to deal with and confront. And I appreciate that. You don't always see that in horror movies. And sometimes in the past, studios have gotten involved to be like, hey, can you not make it so much about this or that? Or, or can you just like kind of touch on it but don't really dwell in it? This dwells in it, and I love that. And I'll tell you this, one more thing, uh, just one more thing about uh, the themes that ending, I'm very curious to see how a lot of you will take that ending. I love the ending because I thought it was straight up, right in your face yet again. No, no need for subtlety showing you real horror versus imagined horror. One, you can kind of delude yourself and believe is fantastical. The other one feels all too damn real. And I love the fact that they were willing to dive into that and show that here in this movie. All right, let's get into some of the things that I didn't like about the movie or that I could ding about the movie. And as I mentioned earlier, I really feel like Brianna's storyline isn't explored as deeply as it should be. And there's a situation that happens with her father in the past that kind of relates to a, a, a something she encounters and what that leads to uh, in her own mind as well. I would have liked to have seen a little bit of more, a little bit more of that explored as much as we do explore Anthony's uh, journey and Anthony's past and his background, which leads to a pretty incredible scene with Vanessa Williams. She's returning uh, one of two cast members from the original returning, Tony Todd being the other one. That's already been out there, so no spoilers there. Yeah, so I would just would like to have seen a little bit more of that. Also, the some of the gentrification stuff, they do present it, but it seems weird because it's the white critic. I think that's uh, Rebecca Spence's Finley Stevens is the white critic who's saying, artists are the re are the people who start this gentrification who start this process so what's the point here and especially if you're going after a black artist your film is going using this character to go after a black artist i was just a bit confused by that like are they saying that all artists are they saying the black artists that they have more of a responsibility to, to not be one of the first people into a gentrified situation i don't know and i and i felt that the messaging was a bit confusing there overall I also think a little bit more could have been done to flesh out um some more of the characters that are in this film as i mentioned the the white film uh, the white uh, art critic she's just there doing her thing but you don't see more of her of the guy who owns 
the art museum. He's just presented in a certain way and there's not much more depth. A surface presentation of a jerk or a, or a cocky person or a condescending person, it's not enough. You gotta see a little bit more. Another thing I could probably ding about the movies that I do think it's a little bit short. I would have loved another 10 minutes of this movie, a little bit more of the fleshing, a little bit of diving in deeper into these stories, into the background of these stories. Why Anthony hasn't known about these stories growing up? Why wasn't he taught about these stories growing up? I would like him to explore a little bit more of the complexity in this white versus black or black versus white approach that they have here in the movie. It is presented right up in your face, as I mentioned earlier in the review, and it's right there for you to, to look at. It's not difficult to pick it up what they're trying to say, but I wanted to go deeper, a little more complexity, a little more more of uh, a little more challenging points of views being bandied about a little more of the exploration of the history of all of this i think a little bit more of that would have been fun to see someone and would have made the film an even deeper treatise uh much like get out was and i would have liked to have seen that for sure but this is all nitpicky stuff uh that uh to me doesn't take away the overall effect of the movie. I think Nia DaCosta has directed a fantastic horror film here that speaks to the social justice themes that it's trying to hit on, really turns around or twists, but does twist on the Candyman story. Uh, and by the time you get to the end of the movie, I think you're going to have some conversations with yourself about whether you enjoyed what you did or didn't. And that's the mark of a great artist making you think about whether you agree with their, with their point of view, whether you agree with the way they went. So it's better to have a conversation about a film than to be apathetic, walk out and go, eh, that was fine, or no, nah, I didn't like it, and move on. This one challenges you, and I appreciate that. All right, well, if you get a chance to go see this one this weekend, let me know what you thought about it in the comments section below. Let me know what you thought of this review in the comments section below. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Uh, subscribe and hit that bell button. When you subscribe and hit that bell button, then you see when we're dropping all the new content we got going on here on the Outlaw Nation channel. Reviews, trailer reactions, live videos, more to come for sure. And then head on over to Twitch, follow and subscribe to me on Twitch, the Outlaw Nation all one word there, so you can see all the stuff I'm doing there as well. And then when you're done there, head on over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash John Roca. Support the Outlaw Nation there with all those multiple tiers that are available to you with all those benefits. They're there for you to take a look at and be a part of for sure. Uh, all right, well, take care of yourselves. Be well. Don't say that name five times in the mirror. And we'll talk to you next time with another brand new review here on the Outlaw Nation channel. We're big. Black people don't need to be summoning.